So let's talk for a minute about the fascia lata, the iliotibial tract or the IT band, and rolling because there's a lot of activity going on around this part of our body. And it's interesting. I mean, I've been following anatomy for years. I've been, you know, exploring the body for many years. And there's, you know, certain waves of interest in particular tissues that come and go. You know, for a while, the, the uh, quadratus lumborum was all anyone wanted to talk about. <laughs> and, or the psoas, or the, or, the, uh, or the IT band, right? So everything get, has its moment. The piriformis, so famous tissues. So the fascia lata is actually the covering of the whole thigh, right? And it's basically the fascia profundus of the thigh, the deep fascia of the thigh. And it invests the whole thigh and the muscles within it, right? So the, the fascia lata is the outer covering, which here has been removed. And there's only a remnant now of the fascia lata. It was cut here. This is the line of a scalpel. This tissue continued over the top here. So the scalpel, our scalpels cut here, removed some, and left some remaining behind. And this is the picture you usually see in the anatomy book, right? Of like this weird white silvery bellhop stripe running up and down the lateral th la side of the thigh. And we call that the iliotibial tract. And anatomically, it does have some characteristic features that are basically consisting in its fibrous organization. It's very, it's very, th it's thick and strong and strappy, and it has um, multiple directions of a, of a 90 degree grid, at least three layers of fiber here that are adherent to one another. There's a certain amount of give and flexibility to the tissue, but I would say more to the point, it's, it's a structural stabilizer, right? Between the head of the fibula and the tibia and the, and the hip, right? Up at the, up, all the way up to the iliac crest. So we can see that the gluteus medius is covered in it. Our tensor fascia lata has been removed. It's covered in it. And in fact, the tensor fascia lata fibers actually connect into it and contract on it. So we have this strong section, as it were, our area or region of the broad fascia of the thigh, the fascia lata, that's particularly extra fibrous, extra structural, extra strong. So it's not just dumb fascia. It's not some dead packing material or wrapper, like a strapping tape. It's sensory, OK? There's thousands, millions, I don't know, a lot. <laughs> I've seen um, people like Robert Schleip and Carla Stecco work to try and extrapolate from the data actually how much sensory free, free nerve endings live in, in these fascia. Their conclusion, a lot. <laughs> it's very smart tissue. And what is it sensing? It's sensing tension, right? And its collective information gives us position in space. So we have proprioception and tension being sensed, right? But also pain, right? <laughs> we can feel pain in our fascia. It's happening there. It's not um, when the tension is off, we, will, we might interpret it as pain, right? So what of that? Wh who cares? Well, there's kind of a phenomenon going on in our culture where it, re it echoes my childhood in the 70s. I was a teenager in the 70s when pain means gain. Do you remember that, folks? Folks who are my age remember. Uh, yeah, Candy's like, yeah, yeah. Pain, no, gain. no pain, no gain. The pain means gain era. That was, I was working out to Arnold Schwarzenegger's supersets. I was getting big with Arnold. Okay, and I would work until I was sick. <laughs> like it was, and I got big, it's true. Um, but nowadays, even in uh, 2020, we have a, a, a memory or an echo of the pain means gain era of the 70s in the form of 
in one instance of, or one example of it is rolling out your IT band. Uh, the notion is it's too tight and it needs to be softened or rolled out and people will you know put a roller maybe a hard roller <laughs> or some object here and and press on it with that object between the floor and their leg and, and kind of roll back and forth and it'll hurt like hell okay <laughs> and it hurt like hell because the, the sensory nerve endings in this tissue are like whoa something's going on here I'm really being dug on the person's gonna fall over warning bells are firing off and, and the whole tissue is excitedly reporting to your to your to your nerve your your uh, sensory apparatus that something is going crazy here and people I'm finding may sometimes interpret that explosion of information that's being delivered to your nervous system through the kind of excessive contact uh, and stimulation of the tissue and they say oh that must mean oh that's because it's too tight I should keep doing what I'm doing and it'll eventually release and get softer your your tensor band I don't know if you want it much softer right it's holding your legs and your hips together it's 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 like exoskeleton it's part of your structure you wouldn't want to like be like damn this bone's too tight I gotta limber it up and you'll be like blah, 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 right you'll fall apart well <laughs> similarly <laughs> all right right so think of it as exoskeleton we want we, we want that that's that structural tension and that sensitivity that's intrinsic to that tissue is because it's just like a horse it's it's like you know, a little fly is on the back of the horse and it's like, eh, you know, and it, and it flicks it off. But it, what if you take a two by four to a horse? Believe me, you're gonna get a hoof to the chin, right? Because too much stimulation and, and that hurts, right? So similarly, we, we wanna treat our, treat our IT band, not like, <clears throat> not like it's some recal recalcitrant mule that we need to, you know, break. We need to break the mule so it becomes passive and not so, not so, um, not have so much tension. Uh, actually, we, we, the tension is okay. If you've got too much tension, what about the muscle tissue underneath it? Have you ever thought about a more you know, gentle way? <laughs> like if your muscle tension, tension is too much, just to soften that, or maybe a little, some kind of yoga or, or something. Or maybe when you have too much tension on one side, you actually need more tension opposite it, right? You can have tissues that are too soft that result in too much tension on the other side, right? So it's like an agonist antagonist phenomenon. And if, it, if something's too tight on one side, it could be because something is too, too flaccid on the other side. Well, what does rolling do? Are there any benefits to it? Are there any benefits to rolling? Well, that's a great question, right? So I think that smart rolling can have benefits, right? Because intervening between this structural element and this muscle tissue structural element is our membranes. I call them perifascial membranes. Right? And these membranes have been disconnected here from the deep fascia, but it's a continuity, right? There's no gap of air here in the actual living body. This has been dissected. So we have a dense, thick, regular fascia, and then we have a, a membranous fascia underneath it before we get to our muscle tissue. And that's the place that we can address, right? Through maybe smart rolling or smart contact with the tissue so that we, that we rehydrate and facilitate the capacity of this muscle tissue to shear relative to the deep fascia so that fluidity and movement is restored. But we don't need to hammer on it to accomplish that, right? That can be accomplished. I love the work of people like Sue Hitzman or Jill Miller or Anthony uh, Cresco, Crisco, really sweet guy. He has a thing called the fashionator, I think he calls it. I use it all the time. So Sue and Jill and Anthony all have very smart techniques that are conscious of this anatomy and structure and that, that treat the sensory aspect of it kindly and that respect the person's sensation component and aren't just busting in trying to soften the fascia lata. It's like a phase shift. Instead of working on this, work on what's underneath it and approach it in a way that doesn't cause so much pain. So gentle rolling, light touch, 
actually do a better job at hydrating without inflaming. You see, because we want to, we want to create slippery differential movement without generating inflammation, which inflammation itself is going to cause more aberrant connections, right, which will then need to be busted up again. And so you end up in this kind of addicted cycle of pain and breaking tissue with inflammation and then causing more connections that need to be broken up again. That's not the way, not, not the road worth traveling. A, a better road to travel is to approach the tissue with respect to gentle, just like you gentle a horse, you'd be a horse whisperer. You want to be a IT band whisperer, right? You want to work at hydrating without inducing inflammation, right? Otherwise, you're going backwards rather than forwards. So that's kind of my IT band speech. Um, I think that's, a, that's a, a, the, the distinction we can make. I'm not saying throw out your rollers. I'm saying use them in a way that's, that respects the, 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 sensory, the sensory nature of this tissue, that respects the, the, the structural relevance of this tissue in its tension, and that facilitates hydration underneath it in a way that will feel even better than your dramatic horse whipping method <laughs> of self-care. Self-care. Actually care for yourself. Listen to your body. It's giving you information. Follow that information. It's frankly smarter than you. <laughs> so, smarter than your neocortex on this subject. So. <laughs>